O2 Chevy Avalanche bar joint replacement. Remove the center cap, remove the wheel, 22 millimeter. This is the driver's side. We're going to be doing the upper bar joint first. Turn the wheel all the way to the right. Disconnect ABS sensor clips. One here. One here to free up tension on the ABS line. Spray penetrating oil of your choice to the top of the bar joint. And a lower bolt. And the same for the lower bar joint. Spray penetrating oil here. And where are we? The bolt. Let it soak until we figure out what size it is to take this nut off. I'm using a adjustable wrench. Your choice of weapon or tool may be different, but the adjustable wrench is working for me. Also, if you notice, I did not take out my axle bolt or nut because I'm not taking the whole spindle off. If you choose to, that's your preference. I'm going to just do it one by one. Also, I uh, spray my outer tie rod because I'm replacing that too. Inner tie rod getting replaced. Outer tie rod getting replaced. Upper bar joint getting replaced. Lower bar joint getting replaced. Sway bar links getting replaced. I know you can't see them because they're still in the plastic. But I got two outer tie rods. Two inner tie rods. Two upper bar joints. Two lower bar joints. Two sway bar links. Uh, gearbox, idler arm, and pitman arm. This whole front end is getting rebuilt. Top nut is loosened, but it's not taken out. We're going to do the same for the bottom. The bottom, got a cotter pin. Remove the cotter pin. Loosen the nut, but don't take it all the way out. Remove cotter pin and 22 millimeter nut. Upper bar joint is broken loose. The nut down in there. It's not taken off. Lower bar joint, same way. Again, weapon of choice. You can either hit the uh, control arm or spindle to pop. Pop the uh, bar joint out for the upper and lower. And actually, because I'm replacing them both, I'm going to use a pickle fork, wedge in between, and see what luck I get. So everything is broken loose. You can go ahead and remove the outer tie rod. Come to the upper bar joint, remove that nut. Upper ball joint is out of the knuckle. Now we can go ahead and start pressing it out. So we're about to press the upper ball joint out. And this one does not have those little clips on it. On the top or the bottom. It flares out at the top as you can see. It gets pressed down. So in order to get it out we got to press it up. And it is super dangerously loose shouldn't be moving like that so this is my setup it's not tight but it is slightly up there so it don't fall apart 
this collar is bigger than the actual ball joint so when I press it up it'll get trapped inside here that's to hold the top of it so that this whole uh, piston thing don't just drop through and this is got different grooves to actually grab the ball joint and push it up and it allows the stud to come out through the bottom right there so I'm gonna tighten everything get it straight and get it pressed out if I'm not mistaken 22 millimeter Okay, so I just broke my center axle nut loose. I didn't take it off. I have an uh, electric impact. Uh, once you get the wheel off, if you do not have an electric impact, you want to loosen this nut loose while the wheel and the car are still on the ground. So here's my new ball joint. It sits in like that. And we're going to press it down. But let me get my setup. So I can show you how I'm going to get it in there. Got the top ball joint in. Now we're about to take the lower ball joint out. I already took the grease fitting off. And i got to get this little clip off. So here we have the lower ball joint. You can do one of two things. You can use a ball joint press. I already took the clip out. That was on the top. Or you can just use go old, old school and just hammer it straight down. Cause it gets pressed out downward so if you hammer it out it should come out could be stuck in there if it is i got my little torch so i might have to put some heat on it so let's see let me get that out so i got the lower ball joint out i had to use my torch put heat on it and as it was heating i used my hammer and just hammered it out So this is my setup. Got the little small collar on top. It's just big enough to sit over the ball joint. The ball joint press sits on top of that. And I have the other sleeve like this with the bigger hole that allows this, this sleeve to go in just pressing up. As you can see, it's going up. Let me get that seated all the way down. Lower ball joint is pressed all the way up. I don't know why I won't focus. But you can get your grease fitting in and your snap ring. Upper ball joint, lower ball joint install. We already added more grease. Now we just gotta get our spindle back on. It's heavy as fuck, so you're gonna have to use both your hands, obviously. Start from the bottom, get the bottom in, and then lift up to get the top in. Okay, first, I'm out of breath. Gotta get your CV axle in. Then, I'm holding this up with my knee. <sighs> We gotta lift it up with two hands to get that bottom ball joint in and get the nut on there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boy was I wrong. You put the lower ball joint in first, then the CV axle. Because if you put the CV axle in, it's gonna bottom out on the lower control arm. So the lower ball joint first, CV axle, upper ball joint. All we gotta do is tighten everything uh, everything down, and we done. I'm just doing upper and lower today. Tomorrow I'll do inner and outer and sway bar length. So please comment, like, and subscribe. I know a lot of y'all watch my videos, but only 5% <laughs> of y'all are subscribed. So please support, support, support. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.